Hi, I'm Michelle Livings and I'm here to talk to Colin Ingram, producer of Ghost the Musical. So, first of all, Colin, could you tell us a little bit about your role as producer? Well, I've been working in the West End now for 15 years and a producer's job really is to, to bring everything together from getting the authors and the writers on board to getting the rights for whatever the producer's doing to hiring the creative team and then raising the money and marketing the show and, and really organising the opening night uh, party. So it's really from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. and, and this journey on Ghost has taken over three years to get to this stage. Wow. So why, when there's so many fantastic films out there, why choose Ghost to bring to the West End stage? I think Ghost is inherently theatrical. You've got all the great qualities of a musical. You've got comedy, you've got revenge, you've got love, romance, and I think when people see it they're going to think, wow, this, this actually is as good as or even better than the film, um, because it just sits so well with music. Some of those themes that we saw in the film, when you bring them to music, are just, you know, really inspiring and really beautiful and, you know, ultimately perhaps more moving. Now the story is being adapted for the stage by the original screenwriter. That's right, Bruce Joe Rubin, who wrote um, the screenplay for Ghost and won the Oscar, uh, that year for it, is, uh, is adapting it for the stage with, with our director Matthew Warchus and Dave Stewart and Glenn Ballard who are writing the music and lyrics. And that means that his baby is being looked after, so people who love the film are going to love the show. Mm. And what's been wonderful with it, Bruce has been able to come back after 20 years, because uh, that's how long it's been since the film's been out, and to look at it with slightly fresh eyes. And we've, we've made some changes, but of course it is the story that we all know and love. Now when it comes to the all-important music, you've got two legendary writers involved. Absolutely. I mean, Dave, Dave Stewart and Glenn Ballard have probably sold over 250 million records between them. Dave Stewart, I think people know from the Eurythmics. Mm -hmm. Dave's also written for films. He, he wrote uh, the, the, the title song for, for Alfie, which actually won a Golden Globe with Mick Jagger. He's uh, written for um, many artists. Glenn Ballard's probably less known, but his work is incredible. I mean, he wrote Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror. Mm -hmm. He wrote uh, with Alanis Morissette. Yes, and Jagged Little Pill. Jagged Little Pill, which albums. is the tenth best-selling album of all time. But he's also written for Van Halen, for Dave Matthews Band, Celine Dion. I mean, actually, if you look into what Glenn's written, he's absolutely everywhere. And I'm interested in how they actually became part of the team. Was it a case of you approaching them? Did they ask you? Well, actually, we, we sat down uh, with Bruce and um, looked at a whole list of artists that we thought would be good to do, um, to do the music of Ghost. So we got in touch with Dave and said, would you like to do Ghost? And he said, that's fantastic. I've had experiences of my, you know, myself where I've sort of had out-of-body experiences. Um, wow. he, was, he was in, in an accident once where he was, you know, had to sort of saw the light, so to speak. Uh, so he had a real personal connection to the material. And he said, um, you know, uh, I'd like to bring Glenn Ballard on board. I'm, I, I work with him a lot. And, uh, you know, the two are fantastic together. They really complement each other. But there'll be a great sound, there'll be that eurythmic sound within the music. You know, Dave has a particular signature and, um, you know, I, people will, will be able to relate the two. But they're writing for today, they're not writing something that's in, steeped in the 1980s. This mm. is something which is very, you know, very, you know, 2010, 2011. Now, is any of the original music from the film going to be used, or is it all new? Well, the only thing from the film is... And I've got my fingers crossed here. <laughs> ...is Unchained Melody. Yes! <laughs> which uh, we have the rights to use, which is fantastic. And uh, it's actually Paul McCartney who owns the rights. Oh, and really? uh, they've been incredibly supportive. Uh, and, of course, that, that's the moment in the, in the, the show where people will, will expect to hear it. And we've done it very cleverly. We've used Unchained Melody in a way which I think is brilliant um, and it comes in and out of the piece um, but I'm not going to give any more away because you have to see the show to, to see how we use it. Okay. But, but it's brilliantly <laughs> done. Um, and the rest of the music as I said is all originals, all mm. new music. It's not a back catalogue show. This mm. is, this is a, a brand new score. Uh, so uh, each song I can assure you is something that has a hook and, and doesn't leave you and you'll be humming these tunes when your uh, head hits the pillow at night. 
Now, the second important element in musical theatre is, of course, the choreography. So who have you got involved? Well, we have Ashley Wallen, who uh, is not someone who does a lot of West End stuff. He has a great passion for musicals. Ashley has worked with um, wonderful people like Michael Gracie. You might know the T-Mobile advert, which was the, 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 the dance in Liverpool mm. Street Station. He has got a real edgy, uh, modern twist to his work, and we believe that that's what we need in Ghost. Now there's a third important aspect of Ghost the Musical, and in fact the very nature of the story demands this, the on-stage magic. You've actually got an illusionist involved. Yeah, I mean part of the team is Paul Keeve, who did some of the illusions on, on the third Harry Potter movie. And Paul's have a real passion for magic from childhood, and he's worked on a number of productions in the West End, such as Zorro and Lord of the Rings and, and Our House. And he is in great demand in the world. We're very lucky to have him because everyone uh, has heard about him and uh, he's, he's you know, very popular now. Um, part of Ghost to stage it, when you have moments like Sam walking through the door, if you remember from the film, yeah. he has to muster up the strength to walk through things or kick cans down in the subway where his foot goes through them. Um, these have to be achieved through illusions because mm. we're not doing a film. We have to do everything live. No CGI. There's no CGI. <laughs> and I think that's what's great about mm. this production. It'll be really bringing people back to live theatre mm. where there is no trickery, there is no you know, fiddling around with the, the singing or uh, CGI graphics. When it came to casting, you actually opted for workshops. So why did you choose this method and, and what actually is involved in them? Well, the workshops are primarily for the writing. And uh, what, what's wonderful about the workshops and the two we've done is we've actually been able to get a group of actors in. We've been able to, to go through the whole show, all the songs from start to finish, and then present it to a group of people. The first one we did was to industry and insiders, which I've got to say was terrifying because there were three ex-bosses in, uh, in the audience for me uh, who are the most difficult people to impress uh, and they were impressed, which was great. And then the second workshop was a much more mixed group of people, some uh, members of the theatre going public, mm -hmm. ticket agents, and we were able to get all that feedback and bring it back into our writing. And in fact we did a presentation three days after that where we actually had made corrections based on some of the feedback we had from, from the first session. So they're great ways to, to, to get the writing uh, mm. right. And then in terms of, as you mentioned, auditioning, um, it's a great way to audition actors because you have them for a long period of time. Mm. And uh, it's, it's, very, it's a very good way to, to really find out the best people. What were the challenges bringing Ghost the Musical to the stage? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I think the illusions are probably the biggest challenge and we've been doing two workshops uh, in, th in theatres to make sure that the environment is in a theatre because in a theatre you have people who sit to the very left and to the very right and also they're at the very top mm. looking down and you have to make sure <laughs> that every view is, is good. Um, I think that's been the big challenge. I think also the writing in inevitably has been a challenge because uh, we've worked with a very uh, perfectionist group of people, and there are, you know, we've we've there there are moments that have flowed very easily, and there are moments that we've had to work on, and uh, you know, I think there's a great responsibility which everyone has mm. to Bruce's work, that he has won the Oscar, and this is one of the most romantic films of all time. In mm. fact, recently I learned that in an opinion poll in America of the most romantic films of all time, only two films uh, were voted uh, in the 1980s, and that was Ghost and Pretty Woman. Yes. And in fact, Ghost was uh, the 20th most romantic film. And if you include all those movies in the 50s, which was yeah, the most popular, absolutely. that's quite amazing, yeah. really. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a big collaboration of people from lots of different disciplines, from choreography, from illusions from design, from, uh, from music, from sound. And that's the great thing about being in theatre. We're very lucky to have Matthew Warchus. You know, he's, he is one of Britain's greatest directors at the moment. He's won three Tonys for his plays in the last three years, and Boeing Boeing and that God of Carnage and um, Norman Conquests. 
What Matthew's brilliant at is telling stories on stage. What sort of audience are you hoping to attract? The main uh, group of people are women. Uh, I mean, Ghost is, is a very popular film for women. And fortunately for us, the main ticket buyers are 43-year-old 40, women is the average <laughs> ticket buyer. It's some crazy <laughs> sp uh, statistic. Yeah. But what I think is really important for, for people watching this film, they're group bookers or, or they're you know, looking to take a party of people, is the fact that this will appeal to, to men as well. I mean, not only do Dave and Glenn's music speak to men, yes. um, the Eurythmics were a very popular band by men, you know, um, but also there's a bit of violence in it. You know, Carl has a nasty death at the end. And mm. um, I think there's uh, a lot of, t you know, comedy with Oda May. And, you know, uh, I think even they'll get caught up with the romance ball. I mean, everyone can relate to this piece because everyone's lost somebody at some point in their life. It's got an absolutely ironclad story. This is a story which works which has been proven to work, and it's worked in our workshops. Um, it's a complete roller coaster ride of emotions. You know, you've got Molly, one minute, uh, you know, she, she doesn't believe in Sam, the next minute someone tells her she does. She goes through all these different emotions, and our musical is very much focused about Molly and Molly's story, perhaps slightly differently to the film mm. from that point of view. This is Molly's story. It's got these incredible characters like Oda May, you know, who is just born as for the stage in a way. And uh, she sings these incredibly, you know, big songs. And uh, her dialogue is hilarious. And it really stands up on stage. And then you've got Carl. He's the guy that everybody likes to hate. You know, not only does he have his best friend killed, perhaps mistakenly, but in the second act, you know, he actually tries to seduce his best friends. Mm. Now he's dead dead best friend's girl, which, you know, you're just, you're just going to hate. That's the point that everybody just goes crazy. Mm. Um, and then Sam, you know, who's this, you know, this guy who's caught in between these worlds and wants to ensure that Molly's safe, but also just wants to say, I love you. You know, he always said ditto. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Colin. Thank you very and much. I'd like to wish you all the very best of luck with the show. Thank it sounds you. fantastic. It's going to be brilliant.